Hi everyone, I'm Liz and welcome back to Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch for Floss Tube episode 78. <music> Sunday Floss Tube video. I'm Liz and I'm here to talk to you about all of my stitching this week. Um, okay, first I want to start with a big thank you for last week. Everybody left me such great comments about how to solve my magnet issues on my monthly word plays and I definitely did use the most popular suggestion as a fix and I will show you that in a second when I start showing off all my FFOs but first just big thank you. Um, <laughs> so uh, let's see what else. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I was like, you know, all sad and alone this week. Not really. It was fine. But um, Rob was out of town this past week visiting his friends and family. And I had the house to myself. And I definitely got a lot done. But I also had some things come up during the week that actually took me out of the house um, downtown <laughs> on a weeknight. What? Um, I'm, I don't know. I'm sure this has happened to other people out there. I can't be the only one. But back in 2019, I bought tickets for a show that was supposed to happen in March of 2020. And we all know how March of 2020 went. It got canceled. The show was postponed indefinitely. Um, well, it was finally rescheduled. And I didn't know that the show I had tickets for was rescheduled for this past Wednesday night until two hours before the start of the show. And originally <laughs> I had bought the tickets for me and Rob. Um, he's in Indiana. I, you know, anyways, they were expensive tickets. Um, I was like panicking because like I couldn't sell them that quick. I tried to call, they wouldn't give me a refund. Um, basically an email went to my spam folder, whatever. It's, I guess my fault, but like I bought these tickets in 2019 Anyways, <laughs> Allison ended up um, being able to come with me and we had a really, really great time. Um, it was a live show from the cast of the show Letterkenny, if that's, I don't know. If anyone else out there watches Letterkenny on Hulu, it's a very weird Canadian show that's hilarious and inappropriate and, you know. Anyways, so it was a comedy show. And um, so that was a great time. But of course, I got no stitching done that night because I was panicking about, you know, anyways, <laughs> I feel like I'm talking really fast and about nonsense at this point. That's okay. Let's keep going. Um, what else? Oh, yeah. So I went over to a friend's house whose husband was out of town this week as well and hung out with her one of the nights and did some like wedding talk and planning and some of the, you know, final detail stuff. So that was a lot of fun. Um, I saw a couple of my girlfriends this morning for brunch, which is why I'm filming a little bit later this afternoon, which was a great time. And it really feels like spring has sprung. Everybody's out and about. Um, we sat out on the patio. It was glorious. It's like 85 degrees here, today, <laughs> which means summer is almost here. And I love it. I love the heat. So, um, yeah, it has been like a very friend filled week. Oh, I also had a zoom on Tuesday night with Jen of Two Tall Stitchers. Um, her and her mom do um, the Floss Tube channel Two Tall Stitchers. And so she and I did a little crafty zoom where I got a bunch of uh, quilt blocks sewn together and she was working on loading a quilt. And yeah, so it's just been like a very fun week where I'm like, distracting myself intentionally and unintentionally um, <laughs> while Rob was away. So yeah, okay, I think that's like the news. So okay, let me get into FFOs. And I am going to start with my word plays. Because as you saw, well, it's normally right here. I've got it right here. Um, as you saw in my last video, I realized that some of the mag or one of the magnets had gotten attached adhesive side down to my cross stitching. And I was like, nope, this can't happen. I gotta fix this. And so by far the most popular comment was to attach 
a magnet to the tin and put washers on the backs of my pieces. That way I don't have to have any magnets inside the tin and they won't be like trying to grab each other and, you know, pulling off my um, cross stitch pieces, if that makes sense. So, um, yes, I went to Home Depot and got um, some, wait, no, I already had the magnets. <laughs> Okay, this is why I'm kind of scattered because I did film myself finishing. I'll just go ahead and show it to you. I did film myself finishing my April wordplay. So this is what I had stitched last week. And then I fully finished it into um, my kind of normal style that I like to put on the tin. And so um, I went and bought these zinc washers at... Home Depot. And so the important part is they need to be zinc so that they're magnetic. And so um, unfortunately, yesterday, I filmed myself mounting the cross stitch. And then I um, took a break and I filmed myself, I thought, putting on the washers and the magnets, but um, I didn't hit record. So I'm just gonna tell you about what I did with the washers and magnets and then you can see the video of me actually mounting my cross stitch. Okay so I'm gonna finish my April wordplay and first step is I need to choose a background fabric that will be mounted behind my piece um, which matches you know all of the other finishes I've been doing for these monthly wordplays. So grabbed a few fabrics. Um, And so like, right away, I love this one. But I also grabbed this fat quarter bundle. It's a lot of pretty yellows. Ooh, so this one would just be a slightly brighter color. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go for I think I'm gonna go for this lighter yellow, this kind of paler yellow. I think it kind of matches a lot of these gold tones. I mean, this is really pretty, but yeah. Okay, that's the winner. Okay, so I just need to remeasure um, and remind myself what size I finished these because it's been a while since I finished. So now I need to cut out um, some mat board and um, then I'll get the stitching and my fabric ready to go. Okay, so now I've got my front and my backer board cut out. Um, so now I can mount my um, wordplay and the backing fabric. Just using my Aileen's Tacky Glue to glue the fabric down onto the backing board. And I don't use any batting um, on the background because it's just about seeing that kind of, you know, pretty color fabric as like an accent. I don't really need it to be padded like I like to do on the cross stitch piece. So I'm just using my hands to hold down the board and my thumbs to grab the fabric edges and pull them tight um, with the glue. So that way I can make sure I don't have any wrinkles on the front of the board. This one right here is gonna get pulled out when I do the um, short ends. And I'm just trying to really pay attention to my corners and make them nice and square without too many lumps or bumps. And luckily with tacky glue, you can kind of um, position things for a little while longer than you can with like a quick dry, like hot glue. Looks good. Got my background all nice and glued, so I'll let that dry while I do the front. Okay, so I am just going to cut about an inch and a half margin around the edge of my wordplay so I have enough to wrap around to the back of the board. This doesn't have to be exact because I'll adjust it as I'm uh, gluing. Okay. 
Okay, so I've got that cut out. Just kind of seeing how my board is gonna be centered on my piece here. Okay, um, so I'll come back to this in a second. I'm gonna uh, put some batting onto the front of this mounting board uh, before I mount my cross stitch. Okay, I just use my spray adhesive to spray down this board outside and I'm gonna lay it on my batting. The spray adhesive I use is just the Aileen's Tacky Glue spray adhesive, which is acid-free, which is why I like to use it. Okay, so now I've got my board. I am going to mark out um, my exact dimensions on my cross stitch with my air erase pen so I can get super precise when I'm gluing it down. got my lines on there and this marker will air erase so these lines will be gone in the next hour okay I'm gonna flip and see how I'm doing lining it up I think it looks very good top to bottom yeah I wanted to cheat it to the top a little bit because, um, I don't know, I just think it looks a little bit better with a little bit more room under than on top, so I'm just making sure that if there's a little bit of a difference, the difference is at the top. Yep, that looks great. And that line will fade um, very soon. Oh, I love it. Okay, so next step is to glue these two together and um, then we'll talk about the um, magnet and washer situation. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna stack some books on top of this to let it dry and then we'll come back and do the magnets. But uh, basically, all I did was I got these, they're called fender washers. Um, do I have the little bag handy? Yes, actually. Okay, so this is what I got from Home Depot, fender washers. And the reason I got them is because they had more of a solid surface area with just a little hole in the center. And so basically I marked um, an inch down in the center and I just lined up the hole of the washer with that. So I knew my washer was kind of like perfectly centered. And then um, I did the same thing. I measured the center of exactly where I wanted these to mount. And um, I E6000 my magnet down onto this and then I can just lay my um, cross stitch piece down, you know, with the magnet on there, and I'm able to adjust exactly where I want it to sit. And then there you go. Then it's mounted to my tin. And then all of the others got washers. You can see I had to peel the magnet off and I took a little bit of the backing paper, but that's okay. Um, and so now all of my other ones have washers on them. And so I can store them just like this and the magnets won't be um, trying to rip off of each other um, and they won't get stuck to each other. So I've let these dry overnight. So now I can just store all of these in my tin. <laughs> like so. Uh, yeah, there you go. And I'll have my pretty one or my, you know, appropriate one for the month out on front. Oops, I've got a loose thread here. I am like 
I know I'm talking like a mile a minute and I'm really scatterbrained today. So I'm just going to keep apologizing for it and tell you that it'll get better next week. Okay, yeah, so that is how my little April wordplay finish turned out. Thank you again to everyone for leaving me comments about switching the position of the magnet and adding the washers. That worked out super well. Highly recommend that if you're doing something like this where you're gonna store the pieces, put the washers on the pieces that you're storing, not magnets. And it also saves money, as everyone pointed out. Um, yeah, so thank you for that. Okay, and I have one more FFO to show you guys this week, and it is um, my Red Stampler Pillow by Brenda Gervais from her book, Keeper of Pins. Sorry, I set the book off to the side already, but um, I showed this last week, but it's Brenda Gervais, Keeper of the Pins. And here is my tiny little pillow finish. And I stitched mine on a 36 count um, hand dyed linen uh, called sandstone. And the fabric dyer is We Will Die For You. And I used the called for thread colors. Um, I did want to mention that uh, one of the lovely owners of We Will Die For You reached out to me and she let me know that they have fabric in, um, they sell their fabric to House of Stitches in Laporte, Inspired Needle um, near Chicago, and then Stitch and Frame, which I think is in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Um, and they also have a website. So I'll post that link below if anybody is interested in trying out their hand dyed fabrics. They're really, really nice. I've got this one, and I think I have two other colors in my stash from when I visited last year. Um, but I absolutely love this sandstone color, and I definitely think I might get some more of it. So... Yeah, that is my little pillow finish. And so I, as you can see, I did um, a little sewn in rickrack trim and I did take, um, or I did make a video of me finishing this pillow and showing how I attached the rickrack and um, stuffed it and finished it up and all of that. So I'll go ahead and let that play right now. Hey guys, um, so today I am going to take you along with me as I finish the um, small red sampler from Brenda Gervais uh, from her new book, Keeper of the Pins. So I stitched this last week and now I am going to finish it. So I've picked out a backing for the pillow and I've picked out a trim. So uh, yeah, I'm just going to show you guys how I finish my small cross stitch pillows using Rick Rack. So the first thing I'm going to do is apply some super lightweight fusible interfacing to the back of the pillow. And I do that to stabilize the fabric um, for when I'm cutting and sewing and to protect all of my stitches so that when I'm stuffing the pillow, um, I don't, you know, un not anything, unsna or I don't snag anything basically. So uh, I'm going to put some fusible on and come back and then we'll cut this out. Okay. So now I have my interfacing on the back of my piece um, and I'm gonna cut it out to um, size. And on the um, finishes that Brenda Gervais did, she left a very like tight margin and I think I'm gonna do the same thing. So I think what I'll do, let me see, actually let me check and see her instructions and see what she says and then I'm gonna decide if I wanna do slightly bigger. So she recommends um, a half inch margin, but notes that if you're using fiber fill to do three quarters, and I am gonna be using fiber fill, so I think I will do a three quarter inch um, margin when I cut my piece out. I had a spot where my rotary cutter didn't go all the way through for some reason. So I'm just gonna trim this up with scissors. So now here is our little pillow front and I'm gonna cut a matching back for it out of my backing fabric. Okay, perfect. Got my front and my back and um, I am going to attach my rickrack and so I think I'm going to sew the rickrack inside the seam of my pillow um, so that when I turn it out I just have like a little half rickrack edging. Um, 
I either use this method or I sew the pillow together and then hand stitch the rickrack on to have the whole rickrack showing on the edge. But I think today I'm gonna do my machine sew method for this pillow. So let's uh, go over to the sewing machine and I'll show you how I do that. Okay, so before I sew the pillow together, I'm gonna attach the rickrack first. And I like to do it, it's four separate pieces. I need to make sure I have enough to do that here. Ooh, okay. I may have to just sew it all on in one piece. So I have enough. Okay, so what I'm trying to do here is just get the rickrack tack down in place before I sew the whole pillow together because it'll just be easier to do this as a two-step process. So I'm trying to sew directly through the center of the rickrack and keeping it um, the same margin all the way down. Um, so let's give it a shot. You can use a basting stitch if you want because this is just to tack things down. I'm on like a two and a half. Um, for my stitch length, so I think that's gonna work for me. So normally I like to cut and then start a new piece, but I have just barely enough. So I think I'm gonna have to just sew this all on as one piece. Which means making some judgment calls about when I need to turn the corner. Yeah, okay. And so I'm leaving my needle in the down position and pulling the rickrack kind of into place. I'm using my, um, my tape line here to line everything up. Might just take it off to help it curve and then lay it back under my needle. I think that'll be easier. And so you can see that like when we turn this inside out, it's just gonna give this this nice cute little rick rack edge. Um, I'll have to really turn those corners out. Anyways, we'll get there. <laughs> See, just enough rickrack. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna leave um, the opening uh, down here on the bottom that I'll hand stitch shut. And I'm gonna use um, my previously sewn rickrack line to make sure I am just inside of it um, so I'm in the right spot to turn my pillow out. Okay, I'm gonna trim down the corners and I'm gonna flip this right side out and see how I did. Oh my gosh. Okay, yeah, this is so cute. So I'm just gonna get my little corner poker and um, get this fully turned out, ironed, and then stuffed. Okay, so here is my little pillow, all nicely pressed, and I'm gonna stuff it through here, and then I will sew up um, this opening. And I am just using a um, Mountain Mist polyfill. I've got my little pillow stuffed 
And now I'm gonna close up the bottom with a little bit of an invisible stitch, ladder stitch. And then we'll do a final press. And then we have our little finished pillow. You can see I'm pulling really hard on my bent my needle there. Oops. Sometimes you feel like you need three hands. <laughs> to do this, especially on small little pillows. They're extra um, fiddly. <laughs> so now I have my hole closed up on the back. So I'm gonna tie off um, and knot my thread. I'm gonna iron this just a little bit more and then we're done. Okay, here is our finished little red sampler pillow from the Brenda Gervais book, uh, Keeper of Pins. Just need to get the loose <laughs> fiber fill threads off of it. But I am super happy with how that turned out. Okay, so that was my little pillow finish from the Brenda Gervais book, Keeper of the Pins. I also had a stitching finish this week. Um, I showed you guys last week my, I'm just trying to find the chart. I'm pretty disorganized today. <laughs> um, I stitched Wedding Roses, um, which is from the Heart Needle Art by Wendy. And I stitched the Today Forever Always, or tomorrow, Today, Tomorrow, Always. And here is my finish. I used my own colors, but to mimic um, as the designer had it. So um, I just use colors like substitutes from my stash. And I love how this turned out. Um, I'm calling this a finish for now because I'm not entirely sure um, what is going to go on the other side of the pillow. She has this other chart with just the four roses on it. And I'm not sure if I'm going to do that or if I'll just do the wedding date um, or just like a ribbon in the center with like a plain back. And then this would be, you know, the pretty side I displayed after the wedding. Um, so yeah, and I may still add like my wedding date. Oops, the tag's getting stuck. I may still add uh, my wedding date, like maybe in between some of these leaves, like over one, you know, somewhere. Um, but yeah, we will see. So I'm going to call this one a finish for now until I figure out exactly how I'm going to fully finish it. And this is 36 count Weeks Dye Works linen in the color linen. Okay, and so then besides all of that finishing that I did, I also had two new starts this week because I have no self-control and I've got a lot of beautiful new projects and I started two of them. Uh, <laughs> I started this last Sunday um, on the first day of spring uh, for the Strawberry Pickin' 22 Sal hosted by um, Kathleen Situation Normal and Merritt Crawford who is so just because. Um, I'll link both of them down below. And I decided to start this Strawberry Harvest chart um, for the Strawberry Pickin' Sal. And I just got this, I think when I was in Las Vegas, and I just, you know, love a giant strawberry. And um, yeah, I got this one started and made some pretty good progress on it. 
Uh, I am missing a couple of the DMC colors it calls for. I tried to go to my Michaels, um, I think last weekend. It was such a nightmare. Uh, the DMC section, like everything's in like the wrong place. There's so many missing. <laughs> I mean, I know everyone's having staffing shortages, but I think I need to just order DMC online because then at least you get the right colors and you're not just hunting and pecking through mismatched, unnumbered drawers. I don't know. Is anyone else's Michaels or Hobby Lobby a nightmare right now? Um, so anyways, I need to order some more DMC. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, uh, I did switch. The green was a DMC or it was called for DMC, but I did switch mine to an overdyed. Um, just since there's so much green in it, I just, you know, picked an overdyed I liked. I can't remember which one now, but um, it's close to the call for DMC. So uh, I'm stitching this on a 36 count seraphim fabric in the color nougat and mostly the called for colors. Okay, and then I couldn't help myself last night. Um, I just got all the floss for this in the mail and this is my favorite market chart and I had to start it. And this is the scissor sampler by Tell an Emblem. And I think it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, I saw it kind of, I guess, live on video um, from several people at market and I just fell in love with it. And so I finally got, this calls for a lot of DMC, which is fine, it's DMC, it's cheap, but like there's a lot of colors. And so I have some, my Michaels had a couple and, and I needed to wait on like a bulk of them to come in. So I got those this week and um, I finally got a little start going yesterday and just working on the border. And I just think it's so pretty already. And I cannot wait and to get into like the birds and the flowers and the scissors. But I'm just starting with the top of the border for now. Um, I definitely wanna work on this one like today and this week because it just feels very springy and fun. And that's the mood I'm in right now. Um, I am, so the call for fabric was Regency by Picture This Plus, which I don't have and I've never seen in person, but I Googled photos and it looked like just a very pale neutral with a tint of green. And so I had this 40 count Picture This Plus Legacy, which is also kind of a greeny gold tint. Um, and this piece is, I feel like is pretty light in color. So I just went ahead and used this 40 count Legacy. Um, because I feel like it's a pretty good sub for the Regency, or at least it's the closest thing I had. So I'm stitching my 40 count with one thread over two linen threads. And I'm using all of the called for DMC and there's a few weeks dye works called for. So that's my start on scissor sampler. And I really can't wait to keep working on this. I think it's gonna be such a cute size. Like the border probably goes to about right here. So um, that'll, that'll be the total width of it. So it'll be a nice like, really small sweet sampler. It's only like 100 by 130. So yeah, but it's beautiful. So in terms of sewing, I did work a lot more on my single girl quilts. Here's one of the blocks I made this week. Um, I think I have 10 more of these blocks to make before I can start sewing the whole quilt together. So I am on track again, I'm on pace. The only thing slowing me down now that I am so sad about, <laughs> and I realized this while I was chatting with Jen earlier in the week, cause I was sitting there working on these while we chit chatted. Um, I thought I had every single thing cut out, including these wedge round pieces for putting together all of my blocks. Um, but somehow I miscounted and I am eight short of these wedge pieces, um, which is super annoying because they're tedious to cut out. You know, there's no straight lines. You got to mark it and hand cut it. Um, and <laughs> I thought I was past the cutting. Let's, let's just say that. I thought I was past the cutting. I thought all I had left to do was sewing and now... I gotta make sure I have my templates and then I didn't get rid of them. Otherwise I've gotta draw new templates and then cut out eight more wedge pieces and ring pieces and then I can finish sewing. Um, so after Tuesday, when I kind of sewed everything I could and got to the, well, I think I have two left I can sew together, but otherwise then I'm just down to the eight that are missing the backgrounds. Um, so some point this week, I need to sit down and cut out the rest of those backgrounds 
and then get everything sewn together. So um, Jen, if you need another Zoom, uh, a Zoom hang, <laughs> I have some more quilt blocks to sew. Uh, yeah. Okay, so that's all the sewing. I mean, other than obviously I made my adorable little pillow. I'm just gonna show it off again because I love it. <laughs> I love the little tomato pin cushion. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's all the sewing I did this week. I really want to get through my single girl quilt because I really want to start that ladybird quilt and also my ruby star quilt. And then also this quilt of the month package I have. And then also this flag. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna list all the quilts in my room because I want to work on all of them. I'm like feeling the quilting bug really big right now. Um, so soon. Okay, so besides that, um, basically I... I got some haul, but just very few things, basically just threads. Um, I already dispersed the DMC for the scissor sampler into its bag. And then I got a few more threads um, that I needed for that Madame Chantilly that I'm still trying to figure out exactly how I want to make into like kind of a wedding commemorative thing. Um, and then I got my, uh, it has my address on it. <laughs> I got my fine floss um, package from... The Fat Quarter Shop. I'm in the Silk Floss Club. And so they sent me, this is, what is it called? It always has a name. Leaf Green. So April was leaf, oh no, it's March. March was leaf green. So that's the March Club. So I've got some more MPI. And then I got a lot of packages this week, but they were like all wedding related stuff, not craft related stuff, unfortunately. I mean, it's still fun stuff. I got um, actually the boys my nephews ring bearer outfits and my nieces flower girl dresses in this week and maybe I'll just throw a quick little picture up because they're really cute um <laughs> and I'm really excited they need to try them on first and make sure they all fit but I think those will be you know the kind of um flower girl and ring bearer outfits and I got some jewelry in this week that I want to wear with my dress and what else I don't know I am talking 100 miles an hour. Uh, hopefully this video was fun and made sense. I still have to edit together all my little finishing videos, but I'm just going to assume it all came together. <laughs> I need to relax more and stop being so hyper in these videos. But that's okay. Um, yeah. Okay. I think that's all I have to share. I am going to go eat some lunch and edit this video. And then I'm going to settle in for an afternoon of some floss tube and some stitching because that's what sounds really, and stitching on that, specifically the scissor sampler. That's what I want to be stitching on today. So that's what I'm going to do with my afternoon. Um, I hope everybody else has a great afternoon and, or evening, morning, wherever, whenever you're watching this. <laughs> and I will see you in my next Sunday floss tube update. Bye guys.